In research, it is very important to identify which type of data gathering has to be used. So here are the most frequently used data collection techniques. The first one is the documentary analysis. This technique is used to analyze existing data like personal documents, public records, physical evidences like flyers, publications, plans, handbooks, and training materials. But at times, these documents will not perfectly provide all the necessary information required to answer your research questions. Some documents may only provide a small amount of useful data or their data may be inaccurate or inconsistent. The second technique is the interview. Your skill as the interviewer in personally connecting to the target audience determines if the interviewee is able to express his or her thoughts clearly. This technique may be conducted through personal, telephone, or via email interview. There are three types of interview. Structured interview follows a particular sequence of questions and well-defined content. You, as the interviewer, do not ask things that are not part of the research questionnaire. Usually, the questions used are closed-ended, but as interviewer, you may ask your respondent to clarify his or her answer. A semi-structured interview is guided by a specific set of questions but allows the interviewer to ask follow-up questions in order to gather additional data from the respondent. This technique may add depth and significance to the research findings. Unstructured interview is like a normal conversation with the purpose in mind to gather data about the research study. Your main objective is to build the bond with the respondents due to which there are high chances that the respondents will be 100% truthful with their answers. There is no guidelines for the researchers to follow, and so you can approach the participants in any ethical manner to gain as much information as you possibly can for your research topic. Next is observation. This technique enables you as a researcher to actively participate in the conduct of the study. This typically happens in your home, workplace, or natural environment and not in a lab or controlled setting. There are two types of observation, structured and unstructured observation. Structured observation, the researcher uses a checklist as a data collection tool. This checklist specifies expected behaviors of interest and the researcher records the frequency of the occurrences of these behaviors. Unstructured observation, the researcher observes things as they happen. The researcher conducts the observation without any preconceived ideas about what will be observed. There are four types of observer. Number one is a complete observer. This is a detached observer where the researcher is neither seen nor noticed by participants. It's one way of minimizing the Hawthorne effect as participants are more likely to act natural when they don't know they are being observed. 2. Observer as participant here, the researcher is known and recognized by the participants, and in many cases, the participants know the research goals of the observer. There is some interaction with the participants, but the interaction is limited. The researcher's aim is to play a neutral role as much as possible. Number 3. Participant as Observer Here, the researcher is fully engaged with the participants. She is more of a friend or colleague than a neutral third party. While there is full interaction with participants, they still know that she is a researcher. Fourth is the complete participant. This is a fully embedded researcher, almost like a spy. Here, the observer fully engages with the participants and partakes in their activities. Participants aren't aware that the observation and research is being conducted even though they fully interact with the researcher. Another technique is using physiological measures. This technique is applied with physiological measurement involving physical data from the subject. 
it conveys precise information and more objective than other data collection method. Here are some examples of tools used in this technique. Thermometer, stethoscopes, weighing scale, and other measurement devices. 5. Questionnaire It is the most commonly used instrument in research. It is composed of list of questions about the research topic your respondents has to answer. The questionnaire can be structured which provides possible answers and the respondents have to select from them. While unstructured questionnaire does not provide options and the respondents are free to give whatever answer they want. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of a good data collection instrument. One, it must be concise yet able to provide the needed data. Two, it seeks information which cannot be obtained from other sources like documents that are available at hand. Of course, if the instrument constructed by the researcher is already available at hand, there is no need for data gathering. Three, questions must be arranged in sequence from the simplest to the complex. 4. It must also be arranged according to the questions posed in the statement of the problem. 5. It should pass validity and reliability. Does your instrument measure what it was designed to measure? Does it yield the same result over multiple trials? And lastly, it must be easy to tabulate and interpret. Now that you are familiar with data gathering instruments, let's find out if you can identify the research technique you will use in your study.